Kanban method, meeting billboard in Japanese, takes its roots in the Japanese automotive manufacturer Toyota. It was implemented to improve manufacturing efficiency and reduce waste by providing a simple and visual material replenishment process so that at every step of the production process would get just enough to operate smoothly without stockpiling raw materials or components. The principle is that every time a certain quantity of material is consumed, it becomes immediately visible as an empty box or an empty shelf, and the visual signal, typically a card, is sent to trigger replenishment for the same quantity. Originating in the 1940s and 50s, in a post-Second World War environment, with virtually no computers or digitalization available, the Kanban had the huge merit of rationalizing the world of manufacturing through a simple and yet elegant system with little more than than paper cards and boxes or bins. In their effort to reduce waste and therefore unnecessary inventory on the factory floors or stores, the Toyota engineers devised a system in which the replenishment was directly related to the actual consumption. They chose to follow a pull system rather than a push system. Traditionally, the production of goods is based on the anticipation of the demand, usually materialized by demand forecasts. Goods are produced in advance and then pushed to the market. With pull, the system is demand-driven and goods are made to order. Production and replenishment only comes when needed and not in anticipation of the demand. Therefore, implementing Kanban usually leads to inventory reductions and therefore cost reductions, storage space gains, dead stock reductions, and so on. One of Kanban's great strengths is also that it was designed to function in a world without computers. An organization can implement Kanban with zero IT dependency and for workers with no access to computers, and therefore no training to use terminals and such things. The Kanban, with this idea of cards or signals bringing visibility through the production cycle and avoiding unnecessary accumulations, has flourished way beyond the field of manufacturing. It has been widely adopted in software developments or marketing as a workflow management method to materialize logical steps. It can be as simple as presenting a task board with three columns, to do, in progress, and done, with cards highlighting parts of the project to be implemented and to be assigned to team members. Beautiful in its simplicity and design, the Kanban has many advantages that can explain why the method became so widespread. Mainly, such a system is easy to implement and understand due to the visual signals. A card, an empty space, a box. It has gained traction both with management and teams, and making a change management less of a challenge. It is also flexible and versatile by nature and can easily fit a company's specificities or be compatible with processes already in place. It is up to each company, though, to define its buckets and the logical steps that make sense within their organization. Reports can in turn be produced based on a Kanban system to analyze the system's efficiency or shortcomings related to the specific step or another. But Kanban is not suited for every situation either. By using Kanban, many organizations hope to escape the need to forecast demand that comes with a classic push system. But this has its limits. The size of the bins, boxes, buckets, or any space to be filled in a Kanban system is the product of forecasting itself. It is directly related to the amount that an organization chooses to use as a buffer or safety stock. A special emphasis should be placed on the ability to get replenishment from suppliers and third parties. The size of the bin can be construed as a safety stock and thus directly related to the supplier's lead time. In situations where suppliers are not reliable with fluctuating lead times and quality of materials, Kanban becomes tricky to put in place. The same holds true when demand varies over the year, as bin sizing should not remain constant. But if bins are constantly being reevaluated, the system loses a lot of its meaning. Applying Kanban usually reduces inventory and the risks and costs attached, partly at the cost of flexibility and by introducing a stronger dependency to suppliers and their lead times. It makes it trickier to benefit from network effects or leverage suppliers' MOQs or price breaks. At Lokia, though, we believe that it is possible to make the best of both worlds and going beyond Kanban by leveraging, when the situation requires it, smart heuristic anchored in the reality of business. This is one of the ideas behind the prioritized list that we try to implement with the quantitative supply chain, keeping the things simple and visual for the user while providing an evolutive, measured, pondered, and revised solution that is always data-driven.